G'day and thanks for joining us again on the Patterson podcast where we give lots of useful information about how to reduce inflammatory arthritis naturally and frequently have guests on to share their experience with following a low-fat plant-based diet and how they're able to get tremendous results. Now, today's guest, her name is Emma. She's in Perth, which is on the west coast of Australia. It's 8.30 in the morning there, and she's joining me to talk about her uh, really, really phenomenal transformation with her health in just over the past 12 months or so. She's going to talk about how when she was first uh, diagnosed, she had lots of inflammation in multiple joints and was able to actually avoid the need for medications by moving quickly and very, very thoroughly onto a lifestyle platform of the Patterson program, including its exercise component. And now she has weeks on end without experiencing any symptoms. uh, And it's really, really encouraging. So Emma, thanks so much for coming on to talk with me today. Oh, thank you for having me, Clint. Yeah, so um, I think the, what we're going to get out of your episode uh, is that um, whilst medications are there to help us and we welcome the opportunity to, um, to use them when we're in very uh, high states of inflammation, as I certainly needed to do for several years, um, the power of the natural uh, approach that we have at our fingertips with the way we exercise and the way we eat and potentially some supplements and stress reduction, these things are very, very powerful also. And uh, you're going to share about how you utilize all aspects of those to get to the situation you're in now. So uh, we're going to learn about that. Um, Let's first talk about how it went wrong um, and how you um, became inflamed and what the doctor said and uh, how your body felt when it first happened? Sure. So uh, it was it was May last year and we just had a bit of a cold spell in Bunbury and I noticed waking up in the mornings that I had some real stiffness and pain in my fingers. And at the time, I actually put it down to the cold weather, uh, walking the dog first thing in the morning and I thought maybe I need to wear gloves, you know, maybe it's this cold weather really affecting me. And a couple of days I wore gloves and I was walking the dog and it made no difference and things got worse. The day after that, I'd wake up and not only were my fingers sore and stiff, so were my toes. You know, it was lasting all day. And then it seemed to spread very rapidly within about three weeks, I would say, to the point where I had multiple joints inflamed and it seemed to start at my toes and work up my leg into my ankle and one knee and start at my fingers and work up my arms into a wrist and one elbow. Uh, I work uh, as a psychologist and I sit with my clients and take notes and I always like to have a nice pen. In fact, this is a nice heavy pen I've used for years. I couldn't hold it properly because of the weight of it. it I, was, I was in pain even when I was talking to my clients trying to put that out of my head. Couldn't hold my pen properly, so I had to switch to a much lighter, a much lighter pen. I park at the beach and walk into work every day and I noticed that Walking was painful. I couldn't walk properly. There was my joints were just were just all out. It wasn't feeling right. And it just seemed to be getting worse and worse within days. And off I went to my GP to say, look, what on earth is going on? Now, because I have an interest in natural health and I actually have been doing plant-based eating for pre- precedes the Patterson program for me, I had actually come across one of your presentations on YouTube. And it stuck in my mind um, for a couple of reasons. One, it was a presentation you did, I think, to a group of naturopaths, and it was they were eating dinner while you were talking. And I remember thinking, I wonder what sort of food they're eating. <laughs> and then I also remembered the part where you had improved so much that you were able to run up a hill and your wife had filmed you. And I remember thinking, what an amazing story. What a great guy. I'm going to keep that in my mind in case any of my friends or colleagues ever have this issue. I never in a million years thought it would be me. So I had refound you just getting back onto YouTube, um, you know, looking up arthritis and plant-based eating. And, and you'd come up again along with, you know, Dr. Gregor's work and some of the other plant-based doctors. But off I went to my GP. Uh, she ran some blood work 
it wasn't conclusive basically, but driving home from the GP, I bought my first load of celery and cucumber and I started the Patterson program that day. Okay. So um, did the doctor refer you to a rheumatologist based on the symptoms with your knee and fingers and all of the things happening? No, she, the advice was kind of see how it goes. You know, it's only been, you know, sort of three weeks. And I was really scared at this point, Clint. I, w- I always thought if this keeps progressing at the rate it's going, I'm not going to be able to work. I'm not going to be able to move. I cannot stress to you enough how quickly the symptoms were progressing and how aggressive they were. And, you know, I, I couldn't function in that level of pain living my life and working. It was a real struggle to do that. Mm-hmm. So I had I was walking out of there with a bit of an option in my mind knowing, well, now I can pursue this and see how this works for me. Mm. Had I needed to go down the rheumatology line, I certainly would have gone back. As it turned out, I didn't need to. Mm. Okay. Well, interesting. You were sort of already pre-educated on the, on the uh, path forward and already plant-based. So it's interesting. Uh, there's a lesson there for us as well. Just because we eat in a sort of, uh, let's call a plant-based diet, let's call a whole food plant-based diet, maybe an eight and a half or a nine out of ten. Um, but you can still do even whole food plant-based diet poorly if all you eat, for example, is just avocados and, and nuts. And, um, and and again, not that they're bad foods, but they're more at the top of the pyramid, right? Let's say you're only eating a ton of plant-based foods and they're all f- high in fat. Um, and again, not to incriminate fat, but again, just you know, more of the sort of pointy end of the, the pyramid here. Um, that we can get imbalances. We can imbalance this, right? And if we add stress to that, maybe you would start just started or going through a, a, a growth period of your business or something, or maybe you weren't exercising. So I, I think I can tell you what it was, Clint. Okay. Um, about two weeks before my symptoms started, I was actually in the office one day where I am now, and I felt like a, a fresh juice. And of course, I've got a juicer at home. I couldn't be bothered. I thought, I can't be bothered getting that out and making my own. I'm just going to buy one. It cost me eight dollars, which I thought was ridiculous, and it was it was one of those you buy from the supermarket. It was a you know a good company, but you know pre made and it sat there, and I remember drinking it, thinking this tastes like nothing, and I thought, you know, lesson learned, Emma, make your own, don't pay eight dollars for a. But it just had no taste to it whatsoever. Within a few minutes, I felt really ill, and I had the worst stomach flu. I have ever had in my life. I should have gone to hospital. I was that bad and I didn't and I should have. I I can't describe to you how sick I was. I didn't eat for about, I think, four to five days when I had that, which is very unusual for someone like me. I am sure that that had something to do with it because it was um, maybe a week after I started eating again after that, that these symptoms came. Okay. I'm sure that that did did something, tipped it over the edge, or did something to just start these symptoms off. Well, we we always have to come back to the to the microbes, right? So we know that the inflammation at the joint level is resulting from the presence of either bacteria themselves or byproducts of bacteria. So um, something has shifted with the bacteria uh, in your body as a result of this. What appears to be maybe. Um, you know, something that's gone off, that you were, you were drinking something that had expired, passed its expiry date. Mm. The bacteria mm. in it has maybe caused some kind of imbalance, um, maybe short-term potential bit of leaky gut or, you know, and, and or maybe the leaky gut was already there to some extent and some of this stuff has entered your bloodstream. Yeah, but it's going to be some kind of, you know, it's all, it's, we always have to come back to the bacterial influence of the condition. And so, yeah, it looks like something was was sort of fermenting that you you drank and put yes. you out of action for a while, yes. and then hence uh, you know joints are being um, inflamed and and progressing. Okay, so interesting. And then you've gone and just said, okay, massive intervention. Go with the celery cucumber juice, and you've probably moved quickly on to simple the elimination process, baseline foods. Uh, is that what you did next? Yes, I did the um, juicing for a bit longer than I think it's for, uh, you say two days minimum. I actually, I think I did it for four or five. I felt fantastic on the juice. It really lifted my mood. Um, I just felt great energy-wise. 
it was just such a good feeling. I wanted to continue it. So I did it a little bit longer. My body responded well to it. I'm not underweight, nor am I overweight. So I'm not in the position of, you know, having to worry about losing too much weight. So mm. I was able to, to do it for a bit longer and felt fabulous. And then very slowly reintroduced the mm. baseline foods. Yeah. Um, and then I had the pleasure of meeting you uh, online. You joined Patterson Program Support and we were able to start connecting and uh, talk about where you're at. It was about a month in only. It was very early stages. Mm -hmm. And then I was able to watch and uh, occasionally guide, but you didn't need that much help. You, uh, you basically were very self-sufficient um, and you just went through the process of working through the reintroduction of the foods, but also the exercise. And you really embraced the exercise component. So uh, can you first of all talk about the reintroduction of the foods and how that process went for you? And then we'll get on to talking about the exercise. So reintroduction of foods, I mostly took things really slowly. I knew that there was no point rushing. And if I did rush, it didn't work for me. So this thing of just playing a really long-term game, not thinking about life in terms of days and weeks, thinking about life in terms of months, years and decades. So I was thinking, well, I'm probably going to be doing some version of the Patterson program for the rest of my life. So what's the big rush? There's enough to eat. I'm not hungry. Let's just take it slow. And I think that went in my favor. Uh, the other thing too, which I really embraced was this idea of just Groundhog Day, just get up, do what you need to do. And then the next day, do the same thing. Just keep going, just consistent. And I think, you know, that's one of the strengths I've developed personally over the years is to just repeat, just those good habits, just keep doing them. In terms of the food, I, I, I smile when you say that Patterson program is, I think you say it's 60% food, 40% exercise. Is that, is, am I getting that right, Clint? Yeah, that's true. And, you know, recently I've started to think it's more like 50-50. And, and, uh, Do you? Oh, yeah. And the reason I, 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 I feel that way is because, um, A, it needs to get the attention of people more because people just, the failure to exercise is just profound and out of control amongst folks with rheumatoid arthritis. And the excuses are very, very legitimate and valid. They're in pain. It hurts. The reasons why I understand. And hence the reason to go and start moving more. Um, so yes, let's. who cares whether it's 60, 40 or 50, 50. But the point is, it's really, really crucial to move the joints. If they weren't there, if the, the I always say, look, if you weren't meant to move that part of your body, it would be a straight bone. It's only got a joint because that part of the body has to move. So you got to move it. Yeah. So thank you for letting me just have a little bit of a, a little bit of a shout from the rooftops about exercise. Um, but yes, uh, what were you going to say? I was going to say I have a revision on that for you, Clint. I reckon Patterson program is 45% diet, 45% exercise and 10% just a lot of dishes. I couldn't believe the amount of washing up I was doing, you know, cleaning the juice. <laughs> Three times a day. Cleaning. <laughs> that juicer. I tell you what. The, the, oh, oh, cleaning the, the juicer. Yeah, oh. cleaning the juicer. It's a killer. It's like, yeah, it's 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 one of the uh, one of the downsides. People are like, I can't eat yep. out at restaurants. Well, you try and clean the juicer. That's what. <laughs> oh, I love it. Okay. Yeah. yeah. So look, to me, you know, the food stuff wasn't a thing. It do, it does increase your dishes. Let's be honest about it. But look. I was like, the pain's always going to come from somewhere. You're going to have to pay the price somewhere. So you may as well pay the price in terms of doing a lot of dishes. It's so true. The pain of discipline versus pain of regret. So, we, yeah, your discipline pain is a lot of dishes, a lot of cleaning. Um, but did you, were you able to compost the, uh, the, the um, fibre matter? I used to always grab the, yes. the fibre matter and try and find something to do with it. Um, okay, cool. Well, you, you've, you've reintroduced the foods now. Now, what I want to just jump in here and, and point out is that anyone who's watching or listening to this and thinks, well, okay, um, you know, you've jumped straight into this right away. Your results were probably going to be um, much easier um, than other people because you hadn't had it for a very long time. And I want to point out how sensitive your body was to what you were eating and how crucial it was that you went through this elimination process. Um, 
I don't want people to think that if you had have just, you know, done the celery and cucumber juice for three or four, five days that you did, that everything was going to be rosy for the rest of your life. It was not like that at all. You had to work really, really hard. Oh, absolutely. And I and I knew that. I knew that from those those few weeks that I'd had that had just been uh, so intensely painful and I really saw my future. Um, I'm quite, you know, I'm relatively young. I'm only 42 now. So these symptoms were before I turned 41. You know, I was just like, I'm too young to be thinking about not being able to work and uh, not being able to live a life. So that had really, I, it had really been a wake up call for me. I was like, I need to do something big and I need to do something, you know, consistently to turn this around I, I do not want to go in this direction of becoming incapable and uh, at this at any age of life, but particularly not mm. uh, early forties. Yeah. yeah, and and I, you know, one thing you mentioned earlier, thinking in terms of months and uh, years and decades, is really really powerful um, because you know we do have many 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 years ahead, and that if we are not careful, can be many 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 uncomfortable painful years. But if we Put, play it forward, and Anthony Robbins does this at his seminars. He he, what he does in in one of the many many interventions that he does throughout the the seminars is he he gets you to focus on one of your problems, and so that you have enough emotional leverage to take massive action against this problem, he makes you think about where will that be in a year from now. And, and how will that affect your life negatively and how will it negatively affect those people who you love around you and how will it negatively affect your finances? And then he says, now think in five years, if you don't do anything about it, how will that negative affect you at that point? What will your life look like? And then he plays it forward and asks you to think about 10 years. And, and when you go through the exercise, um, by the time you're done, which only takes five, five, five minutes or something, um, you really feel an urgency and an anxiety about taking massive action right away. And I think, you know, you reminded me of, of, of the, that important mindset that we need is that if we think, oh, it's okay, I'll just pop some more painkillers, I won't go to the rheumatologist, uh, it'll be fine. Um, no, this, this isn't going to look good in 12 months, five years, 10 years, unless we really, really take massive action. In your case, it didn't require a parallel medication, but in most cases it does. Uh, and so we need to get all aspects of our disease management as, 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 as excellent as we can so that our future looks really good. Yeah, and 18 months ago, I didn't know I'd be in the position that I am now. I thought that I might need medication and you know, I would have made my peace with it had I needed that Clint. Mm, mm. But what I wanted to know genuinely was that I had done everything I could, hand on heart, mm. to help myself. Mm. Um, and I thought, well, I've got this opportunity. I really need to do this and do this properly. So the other reminder I have in, in daily life, which really helps me, is the is where our house is. We live opposite an old folks' home. And I've been there for gosh, since 2002. So I have seen generations of the elderly move in there, sit around and do a whole heap of nothing and become more and more incapable. And you see the occasional elderly person who moves in and they, and they maintain their exercise and they keep active and they're doing things and they're walking and they're on stationary bikes and they maintain their health so much better than those who do nothing. Mm -hmm. And I think, gosh, what a good reminder because one day I'm going to be that age and I want to do some things now to help me be the yeah. best version of me 40 years from now. <laughs> yes. I love it. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. So uh, how were the results for you as you were reintroducing foods um, and mm -hmm. how, how were you feeling? Were the pains dissipating? How quickly did they go and so on? Uh, I think it was about th about three weeks in, four weeks in, I had sort of my first pain-free day, which I really celebrated. I think it took about that length of time again to get a couple of days or a day and a half in a row. I yeah. think it was eight to 10 weeks I was getting sort of, you know, pretty consistent days in a row. You know, the norm for me now is, is pain-free for weeks and weeks at a time. Um, unless, you know, I'm trying to reintroduce the food, my body has a bit of a reaction. Or just recently I was down in Albany, it was freezing cold down there. We're in a huge 
mansion air at B&B and I couldn't get the heating to work. I'd tried a reintroduction a few days before and something about the combination of all those factors mm. sort of kicked it off. It was low-grade pain there for a few days, but mm. but most of the time I'm pain-free. Um, and and I got that I got that result fairly rapidly because, again, it's sort of that early intervention, already knowing about the program, starting it straight away. I understand that people sometimes come to this program with um, having had symptoms for years and years, um, mm. and I was fortunate enough not to be in that position. And also, have had a good history of eating as well. That's not. That's not. Uh, you know. Oh I mean- well, well. Clint, let me <laughs> let me confess to some things here. Um, you know, I I was plant based since what year? Two thousand and thirteen. But look, there was lots of vegan chocolate in there. There was lots of avocados, lots of nuts. I was following the work of Dr. Gregor, but not straight away. So didn't wasn't really educated about what a whole food plant-based diet looked at. It was generally getting better as it went, but there was mm. lots of oils. Oh, okay. Interesting. You know, I thought oils yeah. were great. I yeah. thought oils were fantastic for you. Mm. So, so I was doing my best with the information I had. Yep. But going back to my childhood, my teenagers, my early 20s, my diet was appalling. It was, you know, lots of junk food. I loved lollies. I loved sugar. I loved cakes. I had lots of emotional issues around food, which I, you know, needed to look at and treat, and I did. Um, I also took uh, really intensive antibiotics for about, must have been a good 12 months. There we a go. GP in my mid-20s misdiagnosed me with a staph infection, and he just kept treating it with antibiotics. Eventually, I went to a dermatologist, and he said it was a type of eczema called discoid eczema, which uh, GPs um, aren't aware of, and he took me off all the antibiotics. But by that time, I had done untold mm. damage to my body. With mm. And I remember a pharmacist warning me. He was sort of handing them over to me. Uh, you know, here I was again for another repeat on this script. And he said, these antibiotics are really powerful. You need to be taking, you know, some probiotics or whatever he wanted me mm. to take. Mm. And I thought, oh, my doctor's fine with it. What are you worrying about? Yeah. I had this arrogant attitude of like, it'll be fine. Don't worry. And I'm sure that that played a part too. Oh, my gosh, yes. Um, we... Um we, I'm glad that came up because uh, that's that's crucial. You know, it's so frequent, so frequent. How often the like a year of antibiotics or more uh, is in the history of folks who develop rheumatoid arthritis? I don't know if you saw the study that I I did a video about about a month ago, um, and it was basically the you know the more antibiotics you take, the higher risk of getting rheumatoid arthritis, uh, and the more recent that room the antibiotic uh, that you took, the the more likely as well. Um, and so, yeah, the links are irrefutable yeah. between. I did see it, Clint. Yeah, yeah, I did. And yeah. Yeah. Okay. So yeah. let's talk about, um, uh, one more thing about your, your food. You had a big reaction to when you had some, uh, coconut oil in some muffins. Uh, I did a video about this as well, actually, to anyone who follows this channel frequently, they might've recalled, uh, I did a case study where I said, Emma's been doing great. Uh, and then she had some coconut oil. Now, um, people can go back and watch that full um, case study that's uh, recent in our podcast um, queue here, only a few episodes back. Um, but in a nutshell, uh, you have basically eaten some coconut oil inside a muffin uh, that your friend made for you innocently thinking it was okay. You didn't know the oil was in there. And it took you about a month to get back on track, didn't it, to feel pain-free again? Oh, oh, easily, easily, Clint. I think really my recovery has taken probably closer to three or four months. Um, but the first month was very touch and go. The first month I thought that I actually might have to go down the line of medication and, and actually pursue a rheumatology appointment. I struggled to get my inflammation down from that. And I cranked up. I, so consistently I do easily four yoga classes a week. I and, and intense classes, I park my car at the beach every day and walk into work and back at lunchtime and back again in the afternoon, plus doing other other exercise. And I really had to ramp that up. I was at yoga, you know, six days a week. I was doing extra at home. I was just doing everything I could in that month to try and get this inflammation under control. The, you know, with the coconut oil exposure, what had happened, I'd just reintroduced nuts successfully. And someone very kindly, actually, it was actually, it wasn't muffins. It was actually a, you know, those raw, raw vegan cheesecakes. 
was actually one of those. And so I had exposure to that They're coconut delicious. multiple times. I ate more than one piece, you know, because <laughs> I, I waited a few hours. I seemed fine. I thought, well, it's just nut-based. You know, this is great. Next day I had another piece and it was the multiple exposure, I think, that really did me some damage there. I just kind of celebrated being one year on the Patterson mm. program and going great, you know, really, mm. because I'd been so consistent. I'd had pretty smooth sailing. Mm. And my biggest fear had been what happens if I get inadvertently exposed to some oil mm. here? Well, I faced my biggest fear because <laughs> it happened to me. Yeah, wow. Well, well at yeah. least it happened when you had, you know, when we were in constant communication, we were able to instantly come up with a plan. We, we, you, you put the plan in place. Uh, you had encouragement from not just myself but others, and we saw that after a week and then two weeks, you were like, you know what, I'm, I'm, I'm slowly getting back on track again. But yeah, I mean, what a, uh, you know, no one else would understand this. No one else who hasn't uh, experienced these kind of food sensitivities like we have when we have autoimmune diseases would even believe that eating something as innocent as a, you know, vegan raw uh, cheesecake could have such a massive life threat not life threatening or ending but life altering result it's crazy but it is it is true and it really impacted the quality of my life for that particularly that first month mm. um because it, you know the pain just reared up um really quite intense again in th those joints where it tends to go for me and again you know it it makes life that much harder i start to worry you know am i going to have to go down you know mm. you know it, bringing medication in as part of the support here. Do I need to start thinking about that? You know, it, it does. It really impacts on the quality of your life. Again, it was that those feelings of fear that I had, you know, when my symptoms first started so aggressively. And though, those, um, those feelings and emotions are themselves contribute, contribute to the potential further downfall of our situation. And these, it's so, so, so delicate. When we're feeling good as you were used to feeling um, and you've got momentum, you know, you're on track, you're hitting a milestone at the 12 months, you're celebrating, you're getting encouragement and great work, Emma, from all of your, uh, you know, people who know your journey. Um and you feel on top of the world and those endorphins and you wake up, you step out of bed with a, with a bit of a spring. Everything is self-cycling towards um, continued happiness, continued improvement. You're projecting thoughts into the future of doing things that you've wanted to do. And then when we get into the doubtful situation where we've got the pain going on, we're focused on the pain, we're worried about the future, we're down on ourselves, we... We, we, you know, we're picturing negative things in the future. I mean, those emotional uh, states can really, really create a deeper hole for ourselves. And we've got to work so hard in those periods of, of temporary challenge to, to get out of there as quick as we can. Because if we stay there a long time, it gets real, real hard to get out. Absolutely. Um, and I found kind of the emotional mental game in this the process has been as important as the, you know, exercise and food for me. Personally, I use the tapping technique, the EFT tapping. Some people call it by different things. I know you've interviewed someone on a mm -hmm. podcast about that technique. I personally use it and find it incredibly helpful. I'm also a daily meditator and have been for years. And I also keep a gratitude journal. And again, that's a practice I've had in place for years. I didn't start off doing all those things daily. They They were a bit ad hoc, you know, once a week when I felt like it. And even like that, they helped. But the older I got, the more I realized they were helping me and I needed to have a more consistent approach to those things. Yeah. So, yeah. That's a good reminder to me. I have had in the past those, each of those things, a meditation practice, a gratitude list, uh, those two in particular. Normally I have a goals list of things that I'm hoping to achieve and and then I visualize on those goals and try and, uh, you know, put them out there in the universe and hope that they might be able to happen. Um, a lot of those, in fact, every one of those things uh, has fallen off my um, daily practice, um, except I just literally right here next to me, uh, I created a goals list again last night because, 
yeah, we, um, you know, just need to get back on track with some of the things that that my me and my family are doing. So thank you for the reminder on the gratitude and the meditation. Uh, I'm definitely going to reinstate those as well because, you know, the gratitude is, well, both of them, uh, they're just so helpful, aren't they? They're really great. Yeah, oh, yeah, and I, I notice um, because I sort of have a th- some things I do every day for myself um, and I notice I can skip one of those, like, you know, maybe I, I miss the gratitude journal for one day but I feel it after two or, um, you know, we go cruising a lot and I know you, you've had a background in working on the cruise ships too, Clint. Um, it, I, sometimes when, you know, I, oh, life's so great on a cruise ship, I won't bother tapping. I can feel if I miss a couple of days that I'm not quite as, you know, just – just doing those things daily just keeps the emotional system in tune. Mm, mm. And the way yeah. when, when you're speaking and I'm trying to think about how I respond, you know, it feels almost like if we've got, say, in a car, like a background revs, you know, like the revs of a car, and when you put your foot on the accelerator, it goes mm, mm, like that, right? Let's say we're in idle. And I think like most of us wake up and, and if we've had a good rest, good night's sleep, we might be in an idle state of revs. But our day f- seems to create at least the feeling in my body that my revs are going up through like my the cars like revving faster and faster throughout the day. And if we don't kind of do something to bring those revs back down, then we can wake up the next day and the next day just at a higher level of revs than what we really need to be running at. And cars that run on high levels of revs uh, need more services and don't last as long as those that can idle on a low level of revs. Um, So that's what happens to me. I feel, I don't know, like I'm just, I become more in the head, uh, just just thinking a lot more fleeting thoughts and, and a little bit more scattered, as opposed to just this sense of, you know, you got this, this is fine. You know, life's moving the way you want. And just more of a, I don't know, like a, a rock solid, steady feeling as opposed to like a hummingbird kind of going on. <laughs> yeah. Oh, uh, yeah. That's, uh, that's me. So uh, thanks for, uh, you know, you just dropped into therapist mode then and just let me talk for a little while, didn't you? It's all good. It's so ingrained, Clint. <laughs> So you, did, you totally just let me talk and just well, listen. I, I've been doing it for like 20 years now, which is half my life, right? So <laughs> skills run deep. I love it. I love it. Now I feel the energy shifting. Like now I need to share my problems with you. Um, okay. Well, to, you, I think we've covered most of the most of the things that I wanted to to get across to people, which is that lifestyle medicine is, well, Here here are some of the things that I've gotten out of this, is that even on a whole food plant-based diet, um, we still need to watch things like oils. We still need to eat whole foods if we're eating a plant-based diet, right? Uh, a history of antibiotics is going to set us up for problems. If we've done that in the past, we need to be super careful. And if you uh, happen to know someone who is uh, getting some few symptoms or something, and if you look in their past and they've had antibiotics, immediately uh, intervene and, and get them onto a uh, a healthier diet and uh, and just be cautious because it's such a risk factor. Um, a childhood, you know, um, emotional eater, uh, you know, is also potentially setting themselves up for, for future problems. Um, and then a single, again, a single trigger can be that straw on the camel's back, that, that, that fermented drink that you had that had expired that gave you terrible... Uh, a stomach reaction and and put you out of action for a few days and then cause this joint pain. I mean, it just shows us how delicate our bodies are and how the microbiome, uh, you know, is is an ecosystem that can be so disrupted and that with bacteria uh, getting into the wrong parts of our body, inflammation can can arise. And I also got out of this the importance of massive intervention. When the house is on fire, don't watch it burn. Don't stand there and maybe throw a cup of water on it. We've got to bring in the fire trucks from every angle we can and put it out as quickly as possible because it's our house. It's our most precious asset. And so I got that out of this as well as how we've got to massively intervene. So the, they were really good. And also um, just just the, the nightmarish um, cleaning of a juicer. I also got that out of it as well. How you really hate, clean, how you really hate cleaning your juicer. 
I think you need to work on that. Tap that one out. That's right. Okay. That's right. So, so they've been really, really, uh, really, really helpful. Um, and thinking about how, you know, the big picture, you know, the, ner- the nursing home across the road, you know, you've seen these people, they're going in there and, they're, and the ones who aren't moving are struggling and we want to be the ones moving. We want to set ourselves up for, for being those people. And the years past, Clint, you know, you think about how fast, how fast it's gone, like the last five years for you. For me, it's flown. The next five years will go just as quick. And, yeah, we have to, we have to, I always think I want to play a bigger mental game than most people. I want to think further ahead than just the next week or month. Let's think years and decades. Mm, yeah, love it. Yeah. Thank you. Yep, these are great insights. Um, well, Thank you very much for uh, setting aside some time. Uh, today's a work day for you, and I know it's, uh, it's... It's actually my day off, Clint, oh, but I'm in the office catching up on things, so it worked well to um, to fit this in, and uh, I'm super grateful for you sharing the program, and I'm very happy to put some time aside to talk to you. Oh, wonderful. Well, it's been really valuable, and uh, I know a lot of people get a lot out of it. So, Emma, thanks very much. Make sure you avoid those vegan uh, cheesecakes um, (laughs) and uh, keep up everything you're doing. And thanks for being a member of our uh, Patterson Program support and inspiring so many people um, with your constant updates of positivity. And I know people are are really valuing having your your input on on their uh, situations as well. So thanks very much. Thank you. Thanks, Clint. Have a great day. You too.